Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we are discussing the Debitun DB25 Power Reserve. This watch, a vintage model by the brand Standard, originally sold back in 2009, a highly sought and discontinued dial variant. The watch in rose gold is 44 millimeters in diameter. It's only 11.3 millimeters thick, 51 millimeters from lug to lug, with a 24 millimeter spacing between the lug now we're gonna throw this watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And though it is a large watch, I could wear it. My wrist is outboard of the lugs, just barely. You can see that from over the top, as well as down the barrel. So if you buy this 44, you're gonna wanna have a wrist of at least my size. 16 centimeters in circumference to wear it well. That said, it is super flat. For a big watch, it'll slide easily underneath the cuff. No issues there. Debitun watches are famous for being thin. As you can see right here, we have a blue leather with a grained pattern across the top. It's a sort of navy blue with a folded edge, and it has a Montone blue stitch. You can see the calfskin on the bottom, a brand new Debitun factory strap, buttery soft and pliant. We have a matching Debitun DB25 pin buckle, and yes, it matters. Debitun does have different buckles for different model lines. Rolling around the case, you can see this is where a lot of folks coming from the Mosers and the FP Journes of the world are going to find a bridge to Debitun ownership because it's a more conventional case. It's got fixed lugs. It has a round shape. It has a conventional top to bottom profile with a bezel, a mid case, and a case back. And then it has a solid dial with two hands. This is not the DB28. It's not the floating lug 27. It's not one of the most extravagant models. Instead, it is Denis Flageolet's statement of classical watchmaking within his broad and diverse collection of offerings. And you can see the watch features a lovely knurled crown that's been drilled and knurled. We have these little bullet tips at the edge of these gods or evacuated lugs. Those little Ogival tips are a styling element that spans the ages at Debitun. They appeared on the original DB1 chronograph of 2002. They're still current on the watches today. Now on the dial side, we have a combination of media blasted matte fired blue titanium. You can see there's a metalized track with numerals on top of that for reading the minutes. And so that's blued titanium. The company has a process for fire bluing titanium. If you've seen titanium oxide, you know it's white. So creating blue is an unusual methodology that is proprietary to the company. We've got three different blues here. We've got the matte blue. We've got the gloss sort of saturated cobalt blue that represents each one of these fired titanium cabochon hour indices. And then we have the matte blue with a micro light lathe engraving on the center. That's really important because this is what Debitun often uses in place of guilloche. A rosette guilloche would look a little bit unusual here and out of place on such a modern watch. So in Instead, we have this reductively engraved concentric pattern. There's metal satination on the hour track, and then we have these lovely modified foy style hands. You can see they are leaf shaped, but broad leaf. We have a black polished cannon pinion. Both hands have been skeletonized and black polished across their top. We have a power reserve indicator. The watch is automatic winding. The power reserve is six days, but if you want to wind the watch manually, you can absolutely do that yourself. Changes from red to silver as you wind it up. I should mention Debitun makes its own cases, makes its own dials, makes its own movements. And you can actually see the Debitun maker's mark on the case. So when you spend your money on a Debitun, the money is going back into the manufacturer. It's not buying sports cars or Gelendewagens for Denis. Now you can see right here, this is a movement that first launched in 2006, the DB2024. It is Denis' take on a automatic wind system. So there's a precious metal mass outboard of a very broad set of rotor arms. Now by creating those long arms, you maximize the winding mechanical advantage, but you also create the risk that it might flex torsionally instead of just turning rotationally. So to brace the rotor bearing at center, Denis patented a a spring-loaded system for bracing the rotor against unintentional displacement. That's why we have one, two, three, four cantilever springs. And to reduce the friction when the rotor does touch the springs, you can see each one contains three ruby jewels. You better believe that's patented. We have more of the fired blue titanium on the reverse side. 
And you can see we have one, two, three shock protection springs on the balance. That's called triple parachute. It's there for the sake of uh, chronometry as well as shock resistance. And here's the thing. Most watches feature shock protection for durability alone. Here, Denis recognizes that the faster you can reseat the balance staff pivot in its jewel cup, the faster the watch may resume keeping good time. So this is here to rapidly recenter the balance staff, not just to protect the pivots from fracturing. We have a patented balance design. It's shaped like two overlaid yolks, cruciform, non-annular. It's not a ring, and it features a combination of blue titanium with platinum bulb masses. The idea is to put as much of the mass as possible in the rim of the balance for efficiency and chronometry, as well as to limit the effects of aerodynamics and temperature on the timing of the watch. You can also see the patented hairspring design. While de Batun does not make its hairspring alloy, it does shape them by hand. Two pieces shaped by hand to create a patented curve that allows it to be flat like a flat hairspring and shock resistant like a flat hairspring, but equal all the way around in mass and able to breathe concentrically in any position like an overcoil. Finally, there is a silicon escape wheel that minimizes the friction on the escapement and improves the efficiency of the watch, which beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. De Batoon built no more than a few dozen of this model, making them extraordinarily hard to find and in demand. Reach out to me, tmasso, at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.